The other day we looked at a small Pac-Man arcade cabinet, but now I'm going back to the best kind of technology. Old technology. Before we had portable game machines like the Game Boy or Watara Supervision, the world was flooded with discrete LCD devices, like the Game & Watch or Tiger handheld series. These little units provided ample entertainment during lunch breaks or car journeys, even if playability was influenced heavily by the time of day or lighting available. But LCD wasn't the only option. Before that, VFD or Vacuum Fluorescent Display was king, and VFD meant if necessary you could even play in the dark. In fact, playing in the dark could even add to the tension and gameplay experience, especially when faced with the threat of to gobble or be gobbled. <laughs> in all honesty, that tagline is the sole reason I bought this game. This packaging identifies it as Ogre Eater, but it also goes under the title of Hungry Monster or Gobble Man depending on the region. Released by Tandy in 1983, it's actually a licensed, repackaged version from Bandai who released the game in Japan as Pakri Monster. You can see the Japanese box here. But there was also a North American release which reveals the true intentions. They're clearly not messing about in making sure you identify this as a Pac-Man ripoff, but obviously if challenged legally, what are you talking about mate, it says pac Monster. It's marvellous stuff. Tandy clearly decided to be a bit more cautious with their naming, but the premise is the same. Move your monster through the maze, gobbling up points. But watch out for Bogey! Eat special power food. I'm not sure what they're suggesting with the quotation marks there. And Bogey turns coward. You can gobble him. Man, I love this text. So we've got the Bogey Man now, which I presume are the ogres, and this tagline present across all of Tandy's versions. Gobble or be gobbled. So what's inside? Some beaten up polystyrene, a manual, and the game itself. The manual tells us to please read carefully before playing. Righto, I'm sure we'll manage, Chief. A whopping four double A's are required to power this ogre fest, or you can use an adapter, but that defeats the pure freedom of mobility the game offers. I love how 80s products always try to fill the blank space. Check out this action sticker. Yeah, that makes the game feel important and powerful. Now, as portable games go, this is quite a wide beast. There's not much happening over here on the left, but we do have power and start buttons just off center. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Instantly, memories of the 80s come rushing back. It doesn't matter which game you had, these all invoke the same sort of nostalgia. You can instantly see from the demonstration mode that this is very much that Pac-Man-like game. The maze may be a bit cut down and different, the ghosts may be ogres or bogeys or something, but the premise is identical. So let's get cracking. You'll note that the VFD is multicolored, and we have an array of beeping sound effects to warm the soul whilst eroding the ears, and you can't turn them off either. I can move my gobbling hungry monster about to collect the foods whilst evading the ogres of course. There's so many monsters around here. Straight away it's clear that responsive controls are not really a thing either, this joystick is bloody terrible. If you hit a direction, your monster protagonist will head in that direction and keep going until he hits a wall or you change his direction. That's fine, but it often takes two or three or four pushes to change the direction. It's quite infuriating. I couldn't tell you if it was like this when new, but I hope it was at least a little more receptive to my orders. I tried putting it on the table which made the whole experience a little more comfortable, but still did little to enhance the navigational prowess of my little rebellious monster. And also that's not a euphemism. Thankfully the ogres are thick as 
dog mug. Seriously, the AI here is limited, and most of the time they'll get stuck in a loop somewhere. However, we're working with a tiny maze, so that doesn't really matter. Especially once you get past the first two levels and your ogre count goes up to three. From here on out, it's just the same thing over and over. You collect for food, you get the red power food, you eat the ogres, you finish the level, it sounds a bit weird when you put it like that, and you do it all over again. You can go from one side of the screen to try and make it more exciting. You can even choose to hide in that tunnel if you want, but that's about as exciting as it's going to get. One thing that is quite irritating is that if you get the power food, then an ogre you've already eaten won't turn coward, even if he's been to the middle pen and come out afterwards. I suspect that's a limitation of the logic. Another limitation is the scoring. If you get over 999 points, which isn't that hard, the score counter resets and you're back to zero. And given this is a game almost entirely based on the high score, that's a tad annoying. So rather than keep playing, let's have a look inside this thing and find out what's going on. Almost instantly that joystick thing falls out revealing some conductive pads underneath on this rather simple board. Over there we've got a piezo speaker producing those ear snapping sounds. This plastic screen cover unscrews revealing all the screen markings underneath and really how the VFD screen works. Essentially it relies on cathode luminescence, like a CRT screen. What you can see here is the phosphor prints, which are lit up by electrons when required. Anyway, under that actual screen is really where the game resides, in the form of a Hitachi HD 38800 A27 microcontroller unit. Variations on this were used in lots of games like this of the time. If we look on the back, you can see the original Pakri Monster branding present. This is taken straight from Bandai, obviously. And we've also got some resistors and capacitors and the like. Pretty straightforward components for a pretty straightforward game. So what do I think of this thing? Well, on one hand, it's amazing. It reeks of the 80s. It emits bleeping sounds, which fill me with an uneasy feeling of pleasure. It has a glowing screen, which makes my eyes widen in the dark. But on the other hand, the game is crap. The controls are crap. The thing is crap. And all of these things are exactly what I want in a game like this. It is perfect. Thank you for watching! There's some more things you can click here, all of which help tremendously. In any case, thanks again for watching, have a great evening.